Hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mateo Chavez Lewis, and welcome back to the channel. The other day I was watching a video by one of my favorite YouTubers, Charles Cornell, and in it he talked about the difference between key changes and modulations. And it got me thinking about the terminology we use to describe these two things and how they're defined. Because it's true, to me as a musician, these two things have never meant the exact same thing. Even though nobody ever sat me down and told me what the different definitions were, they just have kind of a different vibe that I picked up on intuitively. So in this video I want to kind of engage with Charles's definitions, because I agree with him on some points and disagree with him on others. And I want to try to define for myself how I view these two things differently. And hopefully then try to explain how this applies to musical theater specifically, because that's kind of my area of expertise, if you will. Before we begin, if you haven't already, subscribe to Charles Cornell. There's a link in the description. He's the best of the best. And if you're interested in music, jazz, piano, theory, all that fun stuff, I promise you, you will find a lot of value in his videos. With that being said, let's get started. So. The basic issue at hand here is that in its most simple form, a key change is a modulation and vice versa. There when we go from being in one key to changing into another key. And the terms are used somewhat interchangeably by the music community at large. So why then do they feel like such different concepts to me? I think a good place to start answering that question is with my like mantra for music, which is that music affects us by surprising us. Key changes and modulations, they surprise us in different ways. And so I kind of think that a definition based on technically objective criteria is less useful for us than a definition based on how they affect us subjectively, because that's what music is really. It's a subjective experience of sound. And I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. There's actually no right or wrong answer to any of this stuff. That's why it's called music theory and not music facts. So, so for me, a key change is sudden and a modulation is subtle. Let me explain what I mean by that. First off, a key change. I think a key change is a very specific phenomenon where we jump up a key out of nowhere. Usually we go up a half step or maybe a whole step. And in a pop style song, this usually happens near the end or near the final chorus to give us that big boost of energy that'll carry us through to the big finale of the song. This is really useful in musical theater where you're trying to tell a story with your songwriting because the character who sings that song is going on a journey and you don't want them to end in the same place as they started. And so a good way to do that is to end in a different key than you started. And as the stakes build up and get higher and higher throughout the course of the story that you're telling in the in the song, it makes sense for the key to get higher and higher as well. That, that makes sense from a narrative perspective. And that's why key changes are so often used in musical theater anthems and power ballads. Check out this sudden change in Waving Through a Window. Did I even make a sound? Did I even make a sound? It's like I never made a sound. Will I ever make a sound? On the outside, always looking in Will I ever be more than I've always been? Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass Waving through a window, oh I Suddenly, the singer is singing higher, so it's technically more difficult, and that creates its own kind of excitement. Also, this is a fun physics fact for you. The way sound works, a higher pitch is literally vibrating at a higher frequency. Like it's vibrating more times per second, the sound wave. So there is literally physically more energy in a higher key. That's science, baby. And this is this is the most important part to me is that the change is sudden. Because remember how I said music affects us by surprising us? Well, in a key change, like that is a really big surprise. It comes out of nowhere, it defies our expectations, and we feel that jump up in energy. We feel that in our gut. A modulation, on the other hand, is much smoother. Usually it's kind of a, a natural transition, at least the way I think about it, it's kind of a natural transition between two keys that are already pretty closely related. For example, the C major scale and the G major scale have exactly the same notes in them except for F. Uh, C major has an F natural and G major has an F sharp. But otherwise, it's exactly the same combination of notes. So if we want to go from C major to G major, all we have to do is play one note you're not expecting, you know, that F sharp. And all of a sudden, it feels like we're in G major instead of C major. So check this out, for example. We're in C major. There's that F sharp. And 
now we're in G major. See, see, see? But do you notice how much smoother that transition was? There was no big sudden explosion like in waving through a window, right? And that's because we're only changing one tiny little note. For comparison, if we were to go up a semitone like waving does, you would have to change five notes in the major scale. C major has a B natural, E natural, A natural, D natural, and G natural. But if we were to jump up a semitone to D flat major, D flat major has a B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. So that's five notes different. It, it's a huge difference. And modulations can be used, especially in musical theater, because they're not such a big explosion of energy, they're a little bit more of a, of a gentle paintbrush to add mood and color and emotion. For example, check out this section of Far From The Home I Love from Fiddler on the Roof, where we modulate from C major to C minor, and it paints the conflict between Hoddle's joy at being reunited with her love and her sadness at having to leave her family. There where my heart has settled long ago, I must go. I must go Who could imagine I'd be wandering so Far from the home I love So there you go, that was very subtle, but it adds a lot of nuance and emotion. Without you really noticing, it doesn't feel like a key change. It just feels like a gentle little, like, like I said, like a paintbrush, you know? And so there we go. Key change, sudden, modulation, subtle and smooth. That's kind of how I conceptualize it. Let's get back to Charles Cornell. So Charles Cornell says that a key change is permanent and a modulation is temporary. So for a key change, the key of the song shifts suddenly in one moment and then never goes back. But then in a modulation, the key shifts to one key and then returns to the original key later on in the song. I mean, he's also a smart guy with the capacity to understand nuance and complexity. So he does acknowledge that there are kind of different points of view on this. But but what was really interesting to me was that even though he has different definitions than I do for these two terms, the examples that he chose to use to describe his definitions were examples that I would use to prove my definitions. Check this out. Charles says that Love on Top by Beyonce is the perfect example of a song that uses key changes. Because at the end, it just keeps getting higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And each time it gets to the end of the chorus, the word top just drops you into the new key without any type of warning or any type of harmonic setup at all. And I, I would agree with that 100%. It's really hard for me to call that a modulation. <laughs> Love on Top is a capital K, capital C, trademark, key change. But it's interesting because this kind of proves my point. The reason that it feels like a key change isn't because it doesn't return to the same key later on, because we as the listener, when we hear this, we don't know whether Beyonce is going to return to the original key later on in the song or not. We haven't gotten that far yet. But we know for darn tootin' how it makes us feel in this moment. And it makes us feel like, Baby, it's you! You're the one I love! You know, like that explosion of energy I was talking about before. Charles himself says that this key change drops you into the new key without any warning, and that's the factor that excites him the most about it. So here's my question for you is, why would we define a term based on something we can only figure out after examining the whole song front to back on paper instead of defining it based on the musical experience it creates for us as the listener in the moment. Ultimately, I think that when we're talking about music terminology, there's usually no one right answer, but I think we should remember that we're using these terms to describe music, you know, a beautiful, complex art form that affects human beings emotionally, and each person has their own experience of it. it, it it's not law, you know, it's not a m math or science, so there, there shouldn't be a right answer. So I think we should define our terms based on how these techniques affect us when we hear them used in music, not based on objective criteria. And that's why I think that defining a modulation as a key change where you go back to the key you came from, and a key change as a change in key where you don't return to the original key. I think that's not as useful as a definition that talks about how these things surprise us differently and therefore how they affect us differently. For example, defining a modulation as a smooth, subtle transition to add color to a phrase and defining a key change as a sudden, 
jolt of energy. As always in music theorization, there is no right answer, but I just kind of wanted to throw my two cents into the discourse. If you have a different definition for what makes a key change different from a modulation, or if you just flat out disagree with me, let me know in the comments. And Charles, if you're watching this, I, I really love your channel. I think you're a fantastic pianist and content creator, and I'd love to hear what you have to say about the thoughts I bring up in this video. Let's grab coffee. Hit me up. And again, for my viewers who haven't checked out Charles' channel, you absolutely should. It's phenomenal. There's a link in the description down below. And if you want to learn more about modulations and key changes, you can check out this video where I analyze the modulations in Let It Go from Frozen. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Mateo Chavez-Lewis, and I will see you next Saturday. Goodbye, y'all.